so good to see you. Welcome to the set. And I really enjoyed our talk the other day, although it was very discouraging to have to deal with something of existential angst in terms of the whole human condition that I felt so strongly. I appreciate your coming in for a rather long discussion on where humanity stands now. And in the audience, welcome very, very much to Conversations. Our guest, and I want to say at the outset, this is going to be a two-part, that is a two-hour program, mm -hmm. with our guest who is Coley Clark. And Coley Clark will be known to a number of people. She's a pioneer civil rights activist from Mississippi. We can get into some of that at some point in the conversation. Good friend of Stokely Carmichael's when they were fighting the good fight in the early stages of that movement here in the United States. She was also the, uh, the candidate for the senator of the United States, New York, in, uh, the, on the Green Party. Green Party, yes. Did pretty well, actually, also, yes. for somebody who's doing that. And she's been concerned with uh, questions of universal justice and the human condition over I think all of her adult life. She's a wonderful human being, and Coley, so good to welcome you to this program. And Harold, it's always coming to your show. Mm -hmm. You are the deep Eminem person, so everybody says, you're going to go to be, be deal with that deep man. Well, but it's just wonderful because he, what you've said for me is true for you. Well, uh, you, you're, 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 you're answering a quest of mine of mm -hmm. answering my sense of mm -hmm. absolute existential dismay about things that we've been going on over this last very short period of time it comes to a kind of in a sense of crescendo with the uh, we now have nabbed uh, Osama bin Laden apparently they we say. say we have nabbed him I don't believe it but the evidence yeah. is yeah. Uh, it's a shaky evidence yeah please, there, there'll please, be a please. lot of that it, yeah. evidence of that but we also both have a uh, and I do, not an adept an expert, but I've got a great commitment and thought about the personage of Muammar Gaddafi, who is the leader of Libya, whose home, where we've both been, I think. That's yes. it. Yeah, we've yes. both been to that home, me a number of times over a number of visits to that country, and you more recently, where we just now killed his son and three grandchildren with predator drones and three so young, forth. Three young, three young babies. Three young baby the granddaughter. Just, all yeah. under the age of 12. Targeting him. And what's going on there and all the implications of that. And I called you an existential angst, as it were, in a sense. Where in the world are we? Where are we going on against a large tablet? And you agreed to come in and talk to some of that. Yes. And just before we started now, I said, where in the world do we begin in terms of trying to get an overall comprehensive understanding of where we've been as a species, where we've been in terms of larger evolutionary developments in this universe and so forth. And I mentioned to you, since we are going to be concerned, among other things, with Mr. Gaddafi, and you proposed remembering back to the early days of the Vietnam incursion of the United States of America where there were a lot of people who were not cons who were not aware of it or they just lived their lives they're not aware yes. of it yes. and it grew in the 60s and then became a major uh, a movement that forced the hand of the geopolitical decision makers Mr. McNamara and so forth and that it might be that the state of affairs now signaling that we ought to be thinking here in New York and elsewhere uh, a moment of time, maybe with some considerable focus to Mr. Gaddafi, but we can get into that and other mm -hmm. things. But uh, a, a moment, a, a teach-in moment, where we begin to get at the questions of what's going on in terms of the larger affairs and what are the implications of that, and that we begin to get something going that could be questioning the basic premises of uh, our, the United States foreign policy, the geopolitical developments over the last periods of time. And I just suggested to you, since Mr. Gaddafi has been very involved in Africa, you're very familiar with some of the things he's done, that maybe we could begin, without going back to the beginning of the Big Bang and you know, the evolution of, uh, evolution of biology itself and all of that, which you could do, string right. theory, physics, and all of that. Homo sapien, uh, we're all African. And we're concerned about Africa in a very real sense, if that part of society who is interested in what is called, in many of the wisdom schools, the least among us, that is the least advantaged people of the world. Many, many large percentage of them are in the country of Af in the continent of Africa. And Mr. Muammar Gaddafi has done so much in his career mm -hmm. to deal with the least among us, rather than just cozying up to the power du jour, 
which has been the lot of most geopolitical movements, where they want to kiss the hem of those who are rich and strong and powerful, whether it's Rome, now the United States, and so mm -hmm. forth, and the gross inequities that have resulted from that, that there may be a period where we're going to get to a point where there's going to have to be concern with the whole of humanity rather than just with the leading yes. edge. And so that's where we're all from. We all come 200,000 years ago up the hominoid line and humanity emerged 200,000 years ago in the continent of Africa. And so maybe we could just sort of begin with that. Are we at, one last sentence, yes. let's get into yes. a long ranging, in-depth conversation, yes. leading maybe to teaching on things. But um, are we at an existential new reality in terms of the evolution of consciousness, the evolutionary process itself, at this particular time, as you and I talk on May 5th of the year 2011, for this species and other aspects of, uh, of, of the ecology and so forth. And is it time for us to begin as citizens to be starting to think in a very large template about where in the world are we and what is the prospect for the human ecological uh, conditions? What do you think? I think we, we, we really, the reality is it's in mm. our face. Mm -hmm. Whether mm. we like it or not, we yeah. have come to a point where we will need a shift in paradigm. Thank you. A paradigm, a paradigm, right. a paradigm. That's right. Not and, one and, paradigm. And, 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 it won't yeah. be just one paradigm. Mm. Yeah. We're looking at economy. Oh. We're going mm. to be looking at human relations. Mm -hmm. But of course, out of economy, uh, mm -hmm. economy kind of shapes. I think so, shape, very shape, much shape, so, shape, so yeah. What we are, yeah. and, and we've come to a point where those dwindling resources, mm. season me fifth or sixth grade, and mm. uh, when, when what was economics came up, they talked about dwindling resources. Well, we have abused and used the Mother. resources that may not be uh, replenished for millions of years in some cases. Mm -hmm. And we have tried to re uh, replace that with the artificial resources that we have. So I'd say we're at a point where we've got to talk about the opening of a new, a new paradigm. A new paradigm, could I suggest a new paradigm? You have a paradigm when you go into a new economic order or something in a historical pattern, but the, a paradigm of paradigms is a major transformation that they call an evolution. Yes. Uh, they call an evolution punctuated equilibrium. You have a system in state, steady state, mm -hmm. and then there's a quickening and the water breaks and then the new appears, a new species appears. Mm -hmm. Are mm -hmm. we at that kind mm -hmm. of a point which these things in our everyday understanding and news and whatnot is uh, signaling the water has uh, about to break or has broken and that it's a it's a, a qualitative transformation rather than a quantitative pattern with the pattern that is held from the past. Yeah, yeah. I think what, 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 what we're seeing, Harold, I would, uh, that's an old spiritual whether that I sang as a child or whether they sang in the South and I Singing. suppose it. Uh, Life is filled with swift transitions, swift mm. transitions. Yeah. Sinner, yeah. you know you can't stand. Ah, sing it, girl, yeah. yeah Place yeah. your hands in things that last eternal. Mm -hmm. And I think it's that kind of a shift. Right, okay. It's going to be that heavy uh -huh. as we come to a new place where these old empires, uh -huh. capitalism, uh -huh. which replaced feudalism and the right. old... Uh, uh, kingdoms of this, that, and the other, and queendoms, and we still got one around. Yeah, uh, yeah. But th that's ready to go. That's what I'm saying. It, it has, it, 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 it's usefulness big, in the world. Big, big change. Yes, and yeah. that's a big bang. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's going to mm. be hard on all of the world, not mm -hmm. just on the humans, mm -hmm. but all animal life and the mm -hmm. planet itself. That's right. Because capitalism was so filthy, uh -huh. degenerate, mm -hmm. that it has destroyed good portions of the planet, a whole human species, many of our human species are gone, animal species are going before our eyes. Well, it's, it's absolutely, I think scientific fact, it might be a little bit, but uh, of all species that have existed through the evolution of the uh, organic process on mm -hmm. the planet have gone, 99.9 uh, .9 of them have gone extinct. It's a yes. thing to keep in mind. Yeah. Yes, uh -huh. so we need to look at that because the planet then itself is challenged. Mm -hmm. The place where we live, home, is challenged. Mm, yeah, yeah. My daddy says it's a fool who cuts off the limb that he sits on. Okay, yeah. So we have cut deep into this limb, mm -hmm. and it's dangling. Yeah. Um, but even with that, we see some trans. As we see the transitions, there are things that we that you that you said early when you talked about the two hundred thousand years ago. Of course, ancestors down south 
talk about I've been here 10 million years. Tell me what about you? Well, homo, so, no, the hominoid line has osteopithecines. Yeah, well, this is just Africans and no training, no, no education. Yeah. People mm. singing as they began to appeal to, 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 to God and try to appeal to the conscious of man at the same time. Right. But what has happened in the last 40 years with mm -hmm. the evolution of Africana studies mm -hmm. is that we now can begin to see for the first time Europeans admitting that they are out of Africa. Oh, ye well, the, it, I mean, admitting it as it, oh, well. There's some who think that the uh, uh, that uh, Neanderthal Homo erectus was into the gene pool <laughs> and so forth. But I think it's almost generally accepted uh, accepted that it's 200,000 years ago Africa. Yeah, but, like, but, but everybody. Yeah. So we're seeing that. That's that's a big move because that's uh -huh. that's a move that's a which discovery. challenges racist thought. Okay, very well. It ought to. It, it, it could right. bring I mean, a commonality. You know, so and that's out not only out of Africa, but right. when you look at out of Africa, that's also out of a black. Africa out of a black mom and a black father. I'm not sure we know exactly what it was way back then. Well, I think we, we, we what they've traced when they begin to look at placentas, the study mm. of, of, of placentas. Yeah, yeah. Is that mm. the, when you look at that, and it's rings, like the rings in, in, in the tree, uh -huh. as you age the yeah, tree, yeah, yeah. it goes back to black mama. Yeah. Well, but the other okay. thing is, is that mm. in the Western world mm. last year, mm -hmm. we get the fact that Africans landed here. 12,500 years ago. We have now that out of Brazil. So we have all of this new stuff that's coming that challenges racist doctrine. So even though we move, as we move to a new paradigm, yeah. I think some of the old madness that we had in the old paradigm and racism has certainly been primary when we begin to think of Africa. Mm -hmm. And we think yeah. of the last 600 years, especially the last, we could yeah. look earlier, yeah. but the last 600 years, mm -hmm. we began to see the, the emergence of this racist ideology. Before then, there was not really a well-developed race concept on this planet. Right. We were people. Yeah, it, we lived it, in we lived in gene pools. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we lived in gene pools without knowing it. But, yes, of course. We, we, the knowledge is growing yeah. all the time, also, yes, isn't yes, it? Yes, Every yes. day there comes a, uh, a revolution over the trance of yes. one branch of science or another. Yeah. One thing I'm very concerned with: Lynn Margulis, probably our leading biologist, is coming now seriously to say that the scientific process itself is coming to be where it cannot be trusted because it's becoming politicized yes. Yes. by forces that are now shaping and being manifest in things like predator drones and so forth. Yep. But the scientific process yep. is being yep. um, not able to be trusted, which is very worrisome to those who are well, politicized. involved at, with the Enlightenment. I was looking at a study last night um, mm. that had been done on uh, intellectuals and academia yeah. and capital, you know, they hook up with a company and you begin to provide a scientist out of the Harvard or Yale or whoever, you providing a science that meets the need uh, of the, the political the, the, du jour. Oh yeah, of the, Same not, not just the political, but yeah. the, we're talking now about the economy, these, yeah. these, these, corporate, these corporate entities. Yeah, the academic community yes. can be bought as much as a congressman, yes. and you've got people who are innocuously specialized yes. out on something, don't have any view of the overall picture, there's no wide systems thinking that's encouraged, yes. so every, they become innocuous by specialization. It's been in, increased with uh, linear regression in computers, you get specialization, and there's no real systems thinking going on much, you know, or it can be bought off. Yeah. So you go back, and I, I wanted to go back because I, I think that we need to look um, at what's happening in the world today, particularly what's happening in Africa, all of Africa. But as you were talking, I was remembering uh, from uh, Wallace Budge was a, a British historian. Who? Wallace Budge, B-U-D-G-E. Okay. Wallace Budge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, published in 1910 a book called um, the, the title, I can't remember the full title, but it was Osiris. It was mm. looking at the, the Osirenization of all world religions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, in it, he talks about uh, a goddess yeah. who was the oldest recorded god on earth. Mm. And she's a Libyan goddess. Libyan? Yeah. Yes, Libyan was Ni. the term for North Africa in yes. Roman Greek yes. times. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and she lived at Neith. Mm -hmm. Her name was Neith, and she lived in Libya, mm -hmm. in the Libyan region. Mm -hmm. Even though if you look at the Egyptian Pantheon, or the called Comitic Pantheon, mm -hmm. you will see her riding on the back of there, along with Assad and the mm -hmm. gods out of, out, out, of, out of Iraq area, Baal, and she'll be riding with them. But she says something that was very interesting, and that I often quote, because I think it's very powerful. She said, I am that which I am. Okay. I am the beginning. I am the end. Okay. I am the first 
I am the last. Okay. I was before there was a was, mm. and I will be when there is no more. That's very interesting, isn't it? I think it? it's Donna Barry. I think she was talking to somebody. You could parse that out and wonder what it means in terms of, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, everything, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I, th like, I yeah. think, you know. From a human perspective. Yeah, because gods yeah. are not sex. I mean, you know, mm. we, we in the Western world, God said this is a feminine quality. So she represents a feminine divinity, feminine qualities, as opposed to the male warlike qualities. Um, but for her to say these things told me she was talking to somebody, and it must have been a man. So mm. we saw, seeing the emergence of this new paradigm. Well, is that it, reported in one of the in, in any of the traditions in that? I mean, yeah, if you is look at it begin in to look cuneiform, at, or how was it recorded, and how was it brought down? I, I'm, to, I'm not sure. I mean, okay, I, I don't yeah. know. I did not look 12, at Burgess. That's back way in, back. Yeah, that Burgess work, because Burgess, mm. Burgess was mm. an eminent scholar in mm. his time, an eminent historian. And so we would have to look at his work to be able to, 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 to detail how he came to. Is that the guy who wrote Black uh, Athena? Do you know no, Black? No, 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 no. These are young scholars. Yeah, okay. Burgess is an old scholar. Burgess okay, was 1910. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, right. 1910. Sorry, he published yeah, this yeah. in 1910. This is an old Well, we've had some. Pre, pre Africa. I'm saying it because it's pre what we, we, we see today as Africana studies. Yeah. Uh, uh, and many, yeah. there were many European writers, not many, but just several European writers who were fine writers in the same hour, uh -huh. who if you read them today, you would think they were in the Africana studies um, era. African, many scholars in African traditions actually study them. Mm -hmm. Diop, uh, who was out of uh, Senegal, mm. she can't tell Diop, I believe is the French pronunciation, uh -huh. uh, studied many of these old scholars. These old scholars were there, they were European scholars, yeah. as well as African scholars, I know evidence of this and that. Uh -huh. um, so. I, I quote Neith because I think we have come to a defining hour. She was in a defining hour. By Obviously, the way, you mean humanity now? Humanity itself, now? all of okay, humanity. Yeah, that's what I'd like to I, keep the, with. The yeah. we that we, we, I'm always talking about the we is all humanity. Yeah, because, right. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Um, well. For African people, there is no such thing as color. Okay. Black well. is not a color. Right. Black represents everything you see in the universe. Mm -hmm. Even today, if you looked in Mississippi where I grew up, we were all the colors. Yeah. Um, not just because of the European mix, but mm. because we were always all of the colors, yeah. because we were the world. We yeah. are the world, and the world begins with us. And that doesn't mean that we are more special in the world than other folk. It just means that we are the, the evidence of, of, of the beginning, that's all. Yeah. Uh, and, and we need to be clear about that. We um. are the evidence of, of the beginning. So if you look at the goddess or said and or, or the god, or the god uh, Asaru and all those beginnings, you'll notice that they are black, except for Seth, and Seth will always be in a pale color. That's well, we, 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 walls, we, yeah. we did have a, a self-reflective conscience characteristic of the species, and we did get to where we could, unlike Australopithecine, one assumed, yes. uh, or th up the hominoid line prior to that, and so, or even habilis and so forth, uh, we did have the ability to ask questions like, what's it all about? Yes. They probably sat in caves and said, what is it all about? <laughs> Unlike, let's say, a crocodile. Probably yeah. does not yeah. have that kind of consciousness. Whether that's progression um, up the line, uh, Bucky Fuller used to process it because everything's thermodynamic mm -hmm. in terms of universes, gradient from the sun to absolute zero, and everything's in second loss is all systems move toward entropy or toward chaos, to the limits mm -hmm. of the system. And um, that uh, he used to posit that the biological evolutionary process, what, 3.8 uh, 3 billion years on this planet it began, the first crossover to organic processes and so forth, that the, the evolutionary process was an anti-entropic function that moved across entropy and brought increased patterns of conscious understanding mm -hmm. to the process of which we are a part. Mm -hmm. It gave a purpose in scientific terms to the evolutionary process, including humanity, in a certain sense, if you can understand. Yeah. And when we've got things where they can take the measure of the universe, like that CERN accelerator now, which can measure, they're going to measure the shock wave of the Big Bang of this universe right. within a nanosecond from mm -hmm. this uh, telescope array of uh, now, LISA. Nanosecond? LISA. Nanoseconds, a billionth of a second. The all nanotechnology right. All right. All right. and all, all right. of that. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, it, it, they have it down now to, uh, they have the shock wave from Wilkinson 200,000 years after its occurrence 
the birth of this universe within 200,000 years. It's interesting, just about the same time humanity has been here. But that's a pretty good measure, being able to yeah. take the measure of things compared to a protozoa. Right. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. There may be progression in a certain way of the evolutionary process. Well, it just says that Patar is still process. at the part of school. Of course, the universe is still uh, Patar, the, the uh, committed God. is still sitting at that part of school, uh -huh. still expand in this universe, and the universe is still growing. It's, yeah, the universe yeah. is growing, and it may be that, uh, like we were, uh, contained Homo habilis almost certainly in the evolution, we may be at a point where we are transcending, mm -hmm. maybe. That mm -hmm. is, if we're able to make it in a certain sense, uh, to where you get steady state, and then there's punctuated equilibrium, there's a qualitative new emergence just as there was a new emergence from habo, a Homo habilis to Homo sapien mm. within the evolutionary process, we may be at a point, if we don't, it's a double-edged sword time that we live in because we have weapon systems mm. which are extensions of that consciousness where you can make the environment other than in an Eden-like sense is the way most creatures mm. encounter it. So we, and we have weapon systems now they could be launched off predators and so forth, that if they're to be unleashed in a spasm of hatred, apparently from modeling, it appears, mm -hmm. uh, since about the year 1970, our species lethal. That is, we have the capability to eliminate the evolution of consciousness represented by the Homo sapien species, which has not been characteristic mm -hmm. of our capability on the destructive side uh, since only about 40 years or so. But this moment, what we're trying to get to is this moment mm -hmm. is a moment of qualitative. And then on the other side, it may be that we're coming to a time where we could liberate the humanity from the injustices that is characteristic of all of history. Well, in every species, there's a group whose job it is to destroy the species. And ours is a capitalist. Okay, well, that's the thing we can get down to the news. We need to get down to that. things that are going on because, because it does the have red. It's the capitalism, it's this greed factor. Mm. It's this need for materialism that we don't need. Okay. You can only eat so much. You can only live in so much space. That's true, yeah. So what yeah. habit? Yeah. Well, we got uh, 7 billion heading for 10, apparently. Yes. And uh, the thing is that a lot of people say we're running out. And what it is, is it, 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 that should be part of a teach-in. Yes. Is that true? What's chapter and verse on just how destructive are the weapons that exist, yes. the black ops, yes. the things where they can destroy? Because throughout most all of history, outside of the wisdom schools, of the people saying, let's love each other and be good and all that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's been the political leaders who have gotten advantage in a technological sense. Get a Gatling gun, you can conquer the other tribe, steal their grain, right. and grow and make your always about, and that's Always about materialism. It's about materialism, yes. and it's also zero sum. That is, there isn't enough. It's scarcity, a mm -hmm, condition of mm -hmm, scarcity. Mm -hmm. We may have transcended that, possibly, if we could read things in the right way. We may have transcended that, and that might be the course to where we could have a real, what would be called jubilee, jump up time, liberation, yeah. at the end of the process kind of time that has been the hallmark of many of the uh, what uh, messianic traditions? Yeah. And, well, that's and up religion. to us. I mean, I think that's right. We, that, we live that, in that, that time that, that, now. We live in that, that time, and when I when we talk about a teaching and Paula Gloria, yeah, God who bless her, really began to push forward on this. Uh, when we began to talk about a teaching, we need to begin to say that look, first of all, mm -hmm. we have stopped being servants, serving to this concept that there's somebody from Harvard or Yale or somewhere else that's brighter than we are. Uh huh. Yeah. We, are, we well, are as bright as any science is in the air. Science belongs to nobody. It might be some real wisdom can come out of the mass that is not there. Yeah, that, Marshall that, McLuhan it, said it once. It usually does, yes. Marshall McLuhan once said there are children walking in the streets that have answers to our top problems in physics because they right. have modes of perception we've lost long ago. And the academic community is bought off. That's right. By people who are clinging to what may be an outdated paradigm about how the things have to operate in this world. Well, One where it's delivered all the wealth and power into a tiny plutocratic class in every political entity and, in every, and certainly in the world as a whole that think they can walk the, the world in big league boots and just exert their power in any way possible yes. to preserve their advantage. So when that's you look at, let us let's look at. There's a piece of poetry, and I was gonna pick it up and bring it, but I, 
decided I'd leave it. Mm. America runs on black. Mm. So What's you look at it, all these inventions, mm -hmm. uh, air conditioning, yeah. the filament in that light bulb. Yeah. Uh, we begin looking up at you know, elevators, mm -hmm. all of these simple things, the things that were simplistic, but they were coming many times from uneducated black folk, people who were just there, uh -huh. little boys and uh -huh. basically males who looked around the society and decided that my daddy used to hear three little inventions. Um, he called them, he said, uh, you know, I had to make uh, less work for myself. Yeah, right, right. So, Practicality. Yeah, practical yeah. things. Jacks of all trades. Yes, yeah, so, right. so uh, what I'm saying Masters is science, many, science yeah. is always there. Uh -huh. Science does not belong uh -huh. in any academic room. And you're using a metaphor for black, for like black people and everything. In this but case, that it was, could be, actually that be, could be, could be any people. But that I'm could just be using, any, but yeah. it's, it, it, in a sense, it's the people who have been least regarded by That's those right. who count themselves the leaders, like uh, That's kings right. on the hill. I'm following That's through the with your metaphor. Right. You know that yeah, yes, right. that that child <coughs> that's walking along the yeah. streets yeah. in any color. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who just cut off, mm -hmm. hungry half the time, um, nothing to do. No, I no account. No reason. Let's not pay yeah, any attention yeah. to them. That's right. That's right. And if you look at a, 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 a the thing, the wealth that are, it's it is ridiculously concentrated at the few one percent of the world population yeah, and I, owns and, I, and George operates Washington and Carver sets the had template. several hundred inventions. Some yeah. of them out of peanuts, some peanut of them out of butter. other things. Mm. But the peanuts is only one of them because yeah, he also he has a Crayola butter. process, yeah, plastics. Yeah. He was wonderful. I, we, yeah. we, this, this brother, no, no he, he's obviously academically trained, mm. Mm. but <clears throat> he owned nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't leave the earth a zillionaire. Mm -hmm. Other people, these people at the top, <coughs> took what he had and they marketed it and they get the proceeds. How do we deal with that? So is what I'm saying is that is what we begin <coughs> to look at is that the small group at the top, when we begin to look at it, what do, how dare you say you deserve what you have? Mm -hmm. How dare you? <coughs> Not just because of the worker in the plant, mm -hmm. but oftentimes, as in the case of Kaba, mm -hmm. somebody else somewhere else created what you have. Everything in the world, all the people in the world are part of the process of making it. And the ecology as well. We have to be in touch with the yes, ecology. Yes, yes. The Gaia principle. The earth as an organism yes, and everything yes. counts and every cell counts and so forth. That's right. Yeah, and with animals. Because, right. you know, we look at animals and we see this animal. Oh, that fox ran like that. Well, mm. I'm going to do something like that fox. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. we all learn. This is a, we, we, we are one big happy family if we want to be. Well, well we yeah, are all involved uh, but, in the creative processes. But I, James Joyce. Learning from each other. Yeah, okay. But James Joyce had a famous line. Talking about history, looking back. Yeah, what we're trying yeah. to do is say, we're maybe at a time of, 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 a, of a, a, you know, it's like a birth. It's hard to get to a metaphor that's big enough or something. But uh, we're, we're, we're at a point, he, he, had, he said, history is a nightmare, you could say, of unjust social order mm. throughout the whole of the human, from which we're attempting to awaken. Mm -hmm. And maybe we are getting to a point where, for instance, the ironclad laws of scarcity itself. Mm -hmm. If we get to the point where we have a capability of providing for everyone, the reverse side of the destructive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We may be that we are getting to a point where given good design and given, you know, doing more with less with really good design, nanotechnology and so forth, just over the horizon coming, we may be able to transcend the ironclad laws of scarcity, zero sum, which leads Mr. Greenspan to say greed is built into human nature. <laughs> that, that's an assumption. Yeah, the, that's human a, nature is assumption. greedy. And there is this principle there they would do it. And you realize the people that are in leadership probably got there by being greedy. They assume greed is all that exists because mm -hmm. that's all that exists within their consciousness. And they got to the top of the hill by having that thing. Do you understand what yes. I'm trying to say? Yeah, I think greed is socialized into human nature. Okay, yeah. That's a socializing process. Uh -huh. That is why capitalism is so dangerous. I think it's Rousseau that talks about it, you know, this uh, or having luxuries mm -hmm. that this that it, no capitalist society could be democratic because mm. it produces luxuries. Yeah. And the man at the bottom is always looking, or the woman at the bottom, or the child at the bottom, is always looking to be what there is at the top in terms of the luxuries. Has there I been want a, a car yeah, like oh, that. Yeah. I want a house like that. Right. I want to be recognized as uh, the the big man who was a billionaire, uh, the billionaire, Trump yeah. or the okay. Hammer or whoever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
that's a part of the luxury that's socialized. Those are socialized phenomena. Those are not natural phenomena. You mentioned okay. before, if I may, the ma ma male and female principles in the universe and yes, so forth. Are. You get down to molecular level and all of that. You get down to reality at that level. There are two things, at least Fuller used to do, it's tensegrity. And you've got, you've got two things. You've got, you've got a thing, to see reality like a, uh, like a uh, uh, soccer ball. And the, the large, the, the round, <laughs> the whole like that would be feminine in a certain sense. And then like 650 million years ago, all life form fauna was in a unicellular sponge form. Mm -hmm. And you could take the analogy that here you are and then you would say, well, here we are. You know, mm -hmm. This is a little silly, yeah. but you do that. And then it would say, this is cool. Let's make it really cool, that steady mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. and let's put up curtains and make it really nice where we are. Mm -hmm. But then there came a thing going like this, through mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. moving mm -hmm. up like that. There'd be a male principle that would go through it and move up from the beginning of uh, evolution itself that began 3.8 billion years ago. Do you understand what I yeah, mean? I mean yeah. And what they're looking for is something that, that male principle, would be tensional integrity, tensional integrity and compression. Mm -hmm. It exists mm -hmm. molecularly. Anyway, it'd be, they're looking for something that will go through the whole, mm -hmm. resonate on the whole, inform the whole, and fulfill the whole, that is for everything, rather than some ego trip. <laughs> Somebody's yeah, going yeah. to say, I'm the greatest, that kind of thing, which has been the lot, the expression. Do you understand what I'm yeah, trying to I say? Am. And that what they're looking for is something that's going to resonate through the whole with truth. Mm -hmm. and, and that integrity that's moving upward in the evolutionary sense. Maybe. I am because we are. Yeah. Because we are, mm. I am. Okay. That's the foundation of what it means in African philosophy to be human. Okay. Yeah. And so what, what we have done in the universe is many societies had come to some very fancy levels. No widows, no orphans, mm. uh, share at this and share at that. No killing. That mm. it is in African traditional thought, it is a violation to kill someone. That's the mm. most serious of all violations. You have no right to kill. Mm -hmm. We yeah. see this in the last couple of thousand years, but certainly in the last 600 years, we see the beginning of the killing. Shocker was that in South Africa. It was a shock for someone to come out and kill. So many of these societies and cultures, we need to look at them because they reached very, very advanced states. But with the coming of capitalism and colonization and this destructive influence okay. brought on by capitalism, mm. we see them, that level of thought being pushed aside. Uh, John S. M. Beatty and certainly there are many others. Uh, yeah scholars on yeah. African religion and philosophy, looking at it, looking at in the indigenous people in, this, in the Western world, looking at their religious and political philosophies. Whole different story. This country is founded, I think, on the Iroquois Confederate that's right, uh, yeah. notions of democracy and others. You know? That's right, that's right. And then the whole Longhouse speech, yes. And then you'll notice that mostly it was all stolen, every treaty broken by the people who had the Gatling gun rather than Jabal That's Nero. right. So, so it's all who's got the power right. to so, conquer the other. So when yeah. you went back and you began to look at these traditional cultures, and I think it's one of the things as we begin to teach, we have to do is go back and look at some of these traditional cultures. Look at them in Europe as well. Mm. Uh, look at some of these traditional cultures and we'll be shocked at what we find. Mm. Because a lot of people are in shock because mm. they went through this terrible violence. It was a coming of the terror. The terror. Africa faced the terror. Mm -hmm. Of faced, colonization. Yeah, they came in yeah. with terror just yeah. even in the enslavement era. Mm -hmm. uh, there was um, one of the popes called in both the Spanish and the Portuguese and asked them, why do you have these black people? There was some sounds in Europe with as many as 30,000 blacks in it. Uh -huh. And he said, why do you have these folk? What's your, it was what's slavery. This? And they said, uh, oh, well, well, well you know, we were picking up the Christianized. He said, no, no, no. Mm. You don't Christianize this group. Mm -hmm. We are fighting the infidels of North Africa and going into what we know today as a Muslim world. We're mm -hmm. not fighting these folk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leave this alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he really chastised them. Mm -hmm. But at a point, less than 100 years later, I think it is, uh, we get popes who say, well, yeah, you know, it's great. Yeah, let's Christianize them because they come with gold and diamonds yeah, and right, silver right, right. and all kind of fancy things. Yeah, so, right, right, right. So, right. Uh, so we're getting now down into the modern. That's yeah, we're probably getting good in we because, do all this Yeah, because yeah, what, what, what we're looking at is we live in a nation, Harold, yeah. called America. Yeah, right. That has, since 1953, mm -hmm. some, uh, certainly the imperialism begun uh, in, in the 18th 
20 is 18. Did you say 1953? Yeah, I want to go to 53 because 53. That one, that's, when we, began, uh, that's when we began to move out in the world assassinating presidents. We have... That was Mossadegh, we have set up, was it? We have, no, that, no. Yeah, that, that's Iran. Yeah, that's Iran, Mossadegh. Yeah, that, that's yeah. right, that's Iran. Yeah, that was, yeah. And we're still fighting with Iran. That's right, that's still um, a big issue we, geopolitically. We may push yeah. it out, but mm -hmm. human nature always reshaped itself, and, it, and it's back. Mm -hmm. But what we're looking at is that we live in a nation. I said imperialism begun, of course, with the Monroe Doctrine in the early 1820s. But if we look across our recent history, you're talking yeah. American history. There was imperialism. I'm talking about British, American Portuguese, history. Dutch. Yeah, we're not uh, talking about the imperialism. Yeah. We're talking about yeah. American that began with okay. the Monroe Doctrine. Okay, yeah, okay. We're talking yeah. about your backyard. You yeah, know, yeah. Go down and, and push the British Stealing and the Spanish all that and the Portuguese land. and the French yeah. out down here. We're going to control yeah. this. And America has yeah. never controlled in the same way. It has not taken huge colonies and transplanted it didn't, no, them. No, not until It nine, takes military yeah, might they began and uses it and then sets up Philippines, all yeah. dictators or mm. whatever that pleases it. Yeah, and America came out of the Second World War in a very good position in terms of their relationship. They had not colonized in ordinate. They, you know, Philippines, I guess, and you could talk well, well, we some had of that. Hawaii and we is. had stolen land from Mexico. Yeah, we had Hawaii and, and, and the Philippines Indian and peoples. some wars. We had places in, that we and had colonized. Had, and imperialism had been. Imperialism had been a lot of what has happened since we called, that's only about 8,000 years ago that we've yes. had civilization yes. and Neolithic. And yes. you had Babylon. Babylonia, we had Egypt, we had Alexander the Great, we had fighting yeah. going on, and yeah. there was yeah. Roman imperialism for a thousand years. So yeah. imperialism has been there as a model, and British imperialism yes. too, where yes. they ruled yes. the waves. Okay, yeah. just to put it in perspective. Yeah, but well, the American Spanish in its own way too for 150 years. That's right. But what we have seen in this when we look at the United States, and I think we need to look at the United States. Absolutely. Because we're because the people that's, that's the sitting here with the blood on our hands, yeah. Harold. Yeah. Blood's dripping from our hands all yeah. over us. Okay. Uh, from what we have done, we have replaced 60 heads of state, mm. most of them elected through democratic processes, including uh -huh. the one Allende, in Iran. Uh, Allende in Chile. Mm, mm. We can begin Mossadegh, to, we yeah. can look at uh, in Krumah, we can look at mm. Lumumba. That's right. And, and, and in the Congo. That's right. uh, we, we, as we begin to look at what we have done, uh, what American government have done, what mm. capitalists have done in our name, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the world doesn't see as they the accumulate. Senate, it doesn't see the Congress, it mm. doesn't see uh, these corporations. What does it see? It mm. sees us uh -huh, as right. American people. It is this filthy okay. madness done in our name yeah. that we, that's why I think. By our so-called leaders. About our. Our betters. Uh, uh, they're and better than us say, leaders. Yeah, you, <laughs> you understand than what I'm, our Harvard leaders. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Fulbright talked about the arrogance of power. He did He was at least yeah. an honest, right. he was an honest yeah. broker. C. Wright we're, Mills, we're, too, yeah, yeah, power so Wright yeah, Mills, there's yes. been a lot of writing on it, yeah. But I, I just want to deal with Fulbright because okay. he was, was yeah. in that congressional milieu we talked yeah. about, the senator. Go ahead, yeah. And he was there, and he talked about this arrogance of power yeah. of the American, inside and outside. He talked about what would happen with education. Yeah, that was with the military moving in, and so yeah. we, we we need to look at this period because we have had the emergence of a mindset that is violent, that is vicious, that is deceitful, that is conniving. Mm -hmm. And that is hell bent on taken from other folk. Those are those little, remember that metaphor I had before about male, female, and yes. uh, compression? Yes. That would be Alexander, you know, the, here yes. we go. And it's Napoleon's yes. off to Moscow or yes. something. And then you got f leaders and so called. That tension that's trying to bring the, informing the whole thing. They haven't had a really effective one that is uh, effectively manifesting that in terms of informing the whole system. If you mm -hmm. understand, we haven't had a vision. Yes. That was worthy of what the future requires is perhaps the point. If and yet get, we've been on a point to, yeah. because of our economic development and before we begin to We're call talking now the we the United States. I'm talking now. about we oh, the United States. Right I don't, I don't want to talk about France and Britain right now. I think we need to focus on we because we okay, are fair right now the leaders. We're the main uh, problem We're now. the leaders of NATO. We're the leaders of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And we, in fact, are... Uh, Cause France, which is always nervous about its position in the world, to be yeah. nervous yeah. because it's worried about losing its power. And we're uh, asking the world to accept that we are historically legitimate. 
Yes. The British thought they were British, they were legitimate. The feudal order thought they were legitimate. Yes. And they expected the institutions to reflect the fact that they were legitimate. People, Robin Hood or whoever was out there yes. trying to say something different was not legitimate. They were a terrorist or something. We've now assumed that mantle, that we are historically legitimate. And in fact, we have a system that is not at all adequate to what the future of our country or the world requires, economically or otherwise. Yes. The economic paradigms, the growth paradigms, the things that they're projecting are not adequate to what's going to be able to fulfill in a liberating kind of way. We need something new and all they can do is uh, fight to reify, yeah. to reestablish the outdated new, new institutions yes. because we've been building for 230 years on principles. We have institutions, notions of uh, mm -hmm. human nature, all kinds of things that we think were necessary just as the British thought so at King yes, George III yes, yes. when the United States it's stood up to them. So, yes. Gaddafi and others have stood up to that and questioned it, and that's not to be allowed. But what America If you has understand done what I'm up, saying, I'm by those who are saying sure. we are legitimate and sure. it's not that's adequate, right. we this don't is, have vision. This is what democracy looks like. Okay, yeah. And we go in and we set up these dictators who mm -hmm. will serve our needs. We set up these dictators. The needs and, of our and, business. And we community. lie and call them democracies. Yeah. I don't care whether we're looking at Egypt, mm -hmm. whether we're looking at the at the Saudis and Qatar and Bahrain. We can look at wherever we want to look. Mm -hmm. We can look at Colombia mm -hmm. in this hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can look at the dictators we set up. Mm -hmm. These hideous regimes. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can, no, we can. Pinochet. Oh, yeah. Pino, yes, of course. Uh, get rid of that Aristide, you know, to yes. hustle them off to Europe. Anything yes. where yes. democracy or anything that's going to serve the least among us rather than reify and buy into those who have the power to enforce their taking over in a plutocratic way a particular area so we can deal with them. Yeah, we can deal it's with them because plutocrat. we set it up because we're looking at a set of resources, mm -hmm. physical resources, right. usually. Or even human resources uh, we're in looking, any well, collective Maybe sense. it was, uh, I think C. Wright and Mildred speaks to that. Mm. Uh, but because he talks about, and when he supported Lincoln, when he mm. talks about uh, that slavery would be the demise of, 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 of any nation that took it on as the other nations began to wake up. And it, it, Africa's waking up 54 nations strong. It held for strong. a long time, slavery. Sure. Slavery held. For thousands of years, actually. Yeah. But slavery yeah, in the Western yeah. world yeah. Uh, for a good 600 years. Yeah, but it's, right. it, it's fallen on its face. And it's right. fallen on its face because the people who were enslaved. Thank you for all that early work yeah. back in 61 when you and Stoker were fighting down there before the thing got really rolling. Yeah. You know, yeah. the civil rights in sure. this country. Sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, you know. You were a pioneer. Yeah. But, but we're looking at this nation which has taken uh, and set up these democracies, mm. these false democracies, false. call them democracies. Yeah. And now. Put it in quotes. The trap. The yeah. trap is now uh, human beings at some point it always that which is pressed to the earth, what was that Carlisle talks about, that which is pressed to the earth will rise again. Mm. So the humans are rising again. The humans are demanding democracy. Mm -hmm. the humans are demanding their fair share. But it's like Wacomo, anywhere real democracy appears, they, they've hit it down. That's right. So now, that's what they're doing now. Now they got a real problem because mm. you yeah. set up the false democracies right. uh -huh. and now the people are rising and your dictators are being thrown out mm -hmm. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And you got to try to figure out how you maintain control mm -hmm. of the masses. Right. Now the how you the feelings of the masses. They're getting up at the urgencies of the masses. Yeah, right. So America yeah. pretends mm -hmm. that she loves what's happening in Egypt. And that they love what's happening in Tunisia. She's yeah. a liar the truth's never been in it. Mm -hmm. And we need to begin to deal with that because Libya mm -hmm. was one of the states that would not buy in. I buy I think she never that, bought in. She I think you're right. He in. was an anti imperialist and it's very sure. interesting in terms of that country because when you look at all the people that that there are in the world and everything, he is supported now, even though the propaganda on the American press is incredible, yeah, and what they've yeah. done to that country is oh. just amazingly uh, uninformed and so forth. But he has, the, he has the support of those people that largely nobody cared about, which would be loosely termed the least among us. That's right. So the Amerindian peoples who had nothing to say when they came and stole all the land and That's so right. forth, in both continents, in both hemispheres of the Western Hemisphere, support him. Chavez does. Yes. Evo Morales, where there's yes. some support for the least among us. Yes. He took major steps toward trying to associate with the situation that can prove the lot of the 
the African people in the countries of Africa, which need support and modernization and everything. He took steps to do that. And the powers that be are not interested in that. They're interested in resources that can enrich them and their plutocratic uh, ally types in all of the no, world. You can't afford to have you an African... understand Af what I'm yeah, saying? I, I hear you. Mm. You can't afford to have an African satellite floating in the heavens. Mm -hmm. And Gaddafi moved in, and that was been in around 92, 1992. Oh. Moved in when they paying $500 million a year, mm -hmm. U.S. dollars. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, in order to, 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 to Europeans mm -hmm. to use their satellites for phone service. Mm -hmm. uh, we know about the, 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 the downing of the aircraft that South Africa shot out of the air because uh, it, for, for Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. uh, Zambia, and those areas to be able to participate in the struggle or to do anything. They had to fly through that zone controlled by mm. uh, South African technology. Uh -huh. And so you could shoot the, uh, the, the leaders out of there and blow them up in planes. And so what we had with Gaddafi moving forward and saying, look, let's get together and let us develop ROSCOM. Okay. Uh, which uh. would be the regional, let me see if I can get it right, the regional African communication, sat the regional satellite Communication Associations of Africa. Right. So they developed that. Right. We will put up the money ourselves to purchase our own satellite. Uh -huh. Only $400 million. You've been mm -hmm. paying for years $500 million mm -hmm. annually. Yeah. And now with one little flat deal, mm -hmm. you can buy a satellite for $400 million. Gaddafi put up $300 million. Yeah, Gaddafi supported that. Yeah. $300 million. It's strong. worth mentioning that uh, uh, Mandela loved Gaddafi, oh, loved even when he was in Robin's a... Island. Oh, because Gaddafi, uh, oh. Uh, you know, Kwame Nkrumah. Yes. And the other, the people that were for the people. Yes. Because understand, the power elites of the world really don't care about the people. Amen. They don't care about the people there or there, except as a group to be intimidated or, or, or what, uh, uh, you know, uh, co-opted or something like that in some political campaign. They don't really care about the people of they the world. They only care about that which they can buy. Off. They, yeah, they can buy and also and use. how they can align themselves. And each of the countries of the world, almost without exception, have a plutocratic class that own everything and That's run right. everything That's and right. want That's to right. run everything and count themselves legitimate. Now, there's been some challenges to that. Mossadegh tried, didn't he, in Iran? He, had, he yes. was elected and he was overthrown by yes. us. That's right. Allende tried in Chile, overthrown. Others, I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? But one that's a, a person who's done that, really concerned with the least, mm -hmm. the, 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 the mass of the people, mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. the benefit of the already wealthy and powerful. Most people want to, yeah. the term in the popular vernacular is suck up to yes. those who are rich, because that's where you can get, you know, you can join in on that club if you can. And it's not going to, but that he has support from those quarters is a mark of what the future needs. Yes. And it should not be discouraged at every turn that something can emerge that would really help them be related to the needs of the masses of the people rather than only those who are also already wealthy and getting some more so all the time. If you understand, yeah, what, I understand I'm saying, what you're saying. He had a pattern that might relate to that. So well, he's got to be, he's got to be bombed and his children killed. And that's so right, because he's like saying that. let's own ourselves. Uh -huh, yeah. We don't need to be owned he had a by pattern, others. He had a pattern that could challenge the legitimacy, and a big pattern, mm -hmm. of the legitimacy of the order that the United States of America 230 years, outdated now, reified, solidified in terms of thinking, mm -hmm. uh, saying, where are all your, uh, you know, you go, go to another country, where are all your co-opted academics and all the kind of things we have and che mm -hmm. checkers upon checkers of checkers of this and that, all the things that have grown up in our thing. And where are they? And they're saying, that's what we need. Just like the British came here in 1812, 40 years after, or 38 years after we made a revolution, burned Washington to the that's ground. Right. That's right. They're saying, that's where right. the hell is your eyes course? Yes. Where are your powdered wigs? Where yes. are all your things we're used to out of a thousand yes. years of feudalism? Because we want we're to, saying that to the world. Because we want to take over an emerging cotton trade. Yeah, right, yeah. Because now that gin is meaningless in 1792. Right. But that gin took on meaning with a British invention and with a Dutch invention. Mm -hmm. Now you got these things where you can process, you can yeah. do all kinds of stuff yeah. with it. Because you're talking about cheap cotton. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about the long state. I'm from the cotton kingdom. I'm from Mississippi. Yeah, good cotton. <laughs> and I can Egypt. tell you, yeah. tell mm -hmm. you the difference between... Yeah. A short staple, you pull it out and it's going to break a long taper staple. That's like a silk thread. Yeah. And so... You're you talking about people that had to go pick cotton. That was an onerous thing. Well, yeah. It was a good thing that we got a pick cotton picking machine, isn't it? 
That's yeah, a metaphor. It was, it was, was that it, a good it, thing? It, it may be and it may be not. When yeah, I yeah. go around mm. cotton fields and see mm. all that cotton on the ground, yeah, yeah. it bothers me. I mean, okay. really, it does bother me, Harold. I want to do get, something about it. I want to get that Let's cotton get that up. <laughs> <laughs> and sell it somewhere. I hear you. But yeah, yeah. The thing that I'm saying is, is mm. that what we as Americans need to begin to understand is that, yeah. and, and this is a good example, yeah. and that is the, 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 the rise of the cotton kingdom. Yeah, cotton And that the British are here because the British. Mm. now have what? They have gone through a revolution of their own, an mm. economic revolution, and industrial revolution as they called it, and you've developed what? A middle class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and you yeah. now can, you, you now can, yeah. you got a poorer class that can afford the cheap cotton. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So they can afford to buy America's cheap cotton because Mississippi is one of the, and Georgia, Mississippi for the most part, Georgia had some long staple cotton, mm. but primarily it's Mississippi that has long staple cotton. Is that a fact? Yeah, I don't yeah. know the detail. Yeah, so right. the long staple cotton. So mm. that's why Mississippi became so so big in the uh -huh. picture. Okay. Um, yeah. So what happens is is that they now want to reclaim that which they lost. And we'll see by 1817, you, know, you can just trace it, 1817, you get the emergence of the first cotton state. Mm -hmm. Mississippi becomes a part of the Union yeah. as a state. Uh -huh. It was a part of the old French territory, Spanish territory, and days gone by, but now it becomes in as a state. It's the first state, and it's the first cotton state. Okay, okay. And so it goes straight through to 1823 when you get the other states lining up, uh -huh. the cotton states. Uh, yeah. So when we begin to look at this, we can, we can look at Africa in the same way mm -hmm. as to what's after. Right now, America must first destroy that which has done what it lied and said it would do. Mm -hmm. uh, free health care, mm -hmm. Libya. Mm -hmm. Oh, free education. Oh, you're, the things for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, free we health care for everybody, free, yeah. free, free education for everybody. Yeah. Uh, that's why they're bombing Tripoli. They're bombing. Tripoli. Bombing a major city. Yeah, a that's city. That's like yeah. bombing New York City. Not mm -hmm. as large, obviously, as a mm -hmm. New York City. Yeah. But bombing a major city yeah. because you want to bomb away the things that you lie and say you want to do mm -hmm. that they are doing. Well, he's done it. I think maybe we could get to Libya now. We're talking yeah, all we our motor for we, 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 we I think we have. We've been in Libya. It's the only country since I've been an adult that I've been interested in. I think they're ahead of history's curve. Oh, they are. Possibly. Let's talk about the Jamaharia. Now, that's yeah. a, Jamaharia is an yeah. Arabic term that means state of the masses. And for those who are viewing, maybe, because the propaganda is so thick now. He's yes. the bad guy du jour Ooh. and everything. And that was the poorest country in the world. Yes. In, uh, well, he made his revolution right about the time of Woodstock Festival. When he disposed couple, of a king that we supported. Well, that was King Idris. 19, 1969. Disposed of king a king Idris that we disposed and the Senussi of the West, yes. the East. They've never in cotton, cotton on him. But he made a revolution. They were the poorest people in the world. Yes. They had suffered a Holocaust of huge dimension, somewhere between one third and one half of their population had been ruthlessly decimated in concentration camps, a test run for what was gonna to happen to the Jews in Eastern Europe yes. and so forth by the Italian fascists in, in Italy, uh, Italy yes. colonizers. And they had suffered terribly. Omar Maktour had led uh, against that. And then he, Idras was the king and he was uh, in a bloodless clue. Gaddafi took over 27 mem members of uh, that just as they began to find that they had some of the very best and richest oil in the world. That's right. Which they have in great abundance. They have oil and natural gas and resources and that's something that people are licking their chops at I would think in the Western imperial model in the French and so oh, it's forth. No question about the it. traditional yeah. imperialism is rearing its head now. But he went and he what he did is he's called it a socialist John Marie, established people's congresses everywhere, right. moved toward trying to have a system that is participatory democracy, where everybody can go and participate in the decision making process, try to have. Everybody's required to participate in the participation. Well, it <laughs> requ I didn't ever see it as required. Uh, I, I don't think not, that. I, think I don't think you even require required. people to do so. Well, you can, but I don't know about that. I think that. it's socialized. I think you socialized. Well, he, to he called it a socialist uh, Jamahari. It is. But yes. he had what is participatory rather than representative democracy, That's right. like we have town hall meetings and That's so right. forth. And participatory democracy where the people 
people have a say in things and a knowledge and are educated to what mm -hmm. the realities are mm -hmm. rather than just somebody to be manipulated in a PR campaign every four years yes. that costs billions of dollars to get into office. You have to buy your <laughs> way in and all the rest that we are calling yeah. uh, that and Yeah, everything. I can't get around New York today because we're buying our way that's in. That's yeah. political. And then economically, he set up a thing. He did not do, but he did socialize. He mm -hmm. had, like Norway, they had huge amounts of uh, income coming. Yes. And he spread it around. Yes. He spread it around. He lived, you've been to his house. I've been to his house that they bombed. It's not a great big old palace or anything like that no, particularly. It's a compound it's with a, two big missiles sitting up that, that we that we Well, that's that we true that there. we bombed. We bombed yeah. it in 86. Mr. Reagan no, bombed it, it in 86 and killed his daughter then. Killed now the he baby. killed his baby. Yeah. Now he's killed his grandchildren doing yes. that and everything. And but he spread it around and so that the the index of all the health index things going from the poorest in the world, they went from practically zero literacy, 96 percent. All the human index things that mm -hmm. the UN and the CI keeps are top of the mark for yeah, all of Africa. mortality rates. Infant, yeah. all, clean um, water, uh, st uh, roads, uh, yes. sewage. Uh, they brought that big river Education, project with yes. Fossil Air. Oh, Education talk, to everybody. Let's be Health clear, to everybody. People, like the Gaddafi provided a man-made river. Up. Yeah, it's huge. Fifty billion dollars worth. Huge thing. Fresh huge. vegetables. Yeah, but it's now being contaminated with the bombing. Well, yeah. Now, but he did that, and then also he uh, did. He did have, a, but he did not do away. He's socialist, so that's mm -hmm. a big issue. Mm -hmm. You're talking mm -hmm. about capitalism. One of the uh, the countervailing views of it is socialism. We yes. had a Bol Bolshevik revolution in Russia mm -hmm. in 1917. Mm -hmm. That was a big thing, mm -hmm. and they they actually did away with the institution of private property. They collectivized everything in the sites state socializing he did that and distributed everybody has their own home everybody their own automobile mm -hmm. so you know there's going to have to be just at a material level a lot of support for the man within Libya okay but he also did way we remember how he does away with that concept that says we are workers well that's another yeah, that's issue really and it's kind of a break point. I, I've got my eye on the clock dear yeah. and we got a two-hour program here, yeah and this is just the beginning of it yes and we've been talking all over and we're talking with Coley Clark a dream girl here at MNN she's coming She's going to be doing more and more programming. Uh, she's got a, a really interesting story. Ran for the Senate on the Green Party uh, very bravely and well, and is a representative. And we're talking about the human condition. We're going to continue this in a second program that's going to air oh, the day after to, this yes. one is. And we'll pick it up sort of on uh, Gaddafi and also pick it up in this general critique of things. And so in the audience, you might want to look for that. It'll be airing tomorrow uh, uh, after this. So maybe this is a good point for us to break and then we'll All come right. back and pick it right up with Mr. Muammar Gaddafi and his private sector that he has a private sector and the conditions under which that private sector was able to function within the country where a good deal of the needs of the people were met through a socialistic order a governmental order that did meet those needs and set new standards of uh, of uh, human index standards for the people of that country. Yes. So we're talking on that sense. And um, oh, we got your contact up at the end there, Coley. So we got to talk us out a little bit here. We got a couple of minutes left and everything. Yeah, but, I think uh, it's really important that we that we, we stress that human index piece is very important. Mm -hmm. That when people begin to talk about higher infant mortality rates, I mean, they were off the scale, but they now. Oh yeah, on the, he's the only one of the African. I think they have a longer African, lifespan than here in the United States now. Well, at other least countries. as long. All the all yes. the indices have gone up to uh, the top of the mark. Annual yeah. income of eight hundred yeah. plus or more. Thirteen, somebody says, thirteen thousand. Somebody they got an says somebody income. I saw like 13. Europe. Yeah, right. Yeah. In thirty years. Yes. In thirty yes. short years. But not what just thirty short. And under the hammer, Collie. thirty short years. Be, it was interesting to me, and we're, we're going to close this out, we've got a couple of minutes. It was interesting, the British came 38 years after we made our revolution to try and stealth this. We went and bombed him 40 years after they got started with their revolution. Their revolution may be an advance in terms of the planet than the one that we were going to, and we bombed. Libya about 40 years after, yes. rather like the British coming trying to protect the old order, we're trying to protect the outdated order. Yes. We're coming back with more of this tomorrow then, so I think we're coming right up at the end of this hour. And thanks a lot for coming uh, for this, and we'll, we'll pick this up, okay? Because it goes out, it, we, we got up to the present situation and the existential angst that both you and I felt at the events of this recent period that brought us yes. together on this set. Yes. Okay, well then, just... Um, we're almost done with well, this. Well, Harold, I'm telling you, you really are wonderful to be 
still out here to have visited Libya, to have spent time with Muammar Gaddafi. Yeah, we I did was a, just mm -hmm. there in January for that brief moment of about six days. Yeah. Didn't have your kind of an experience, but mm -hmm. I was there for long enough to know that the Libyan people were not terrorized by their leader. Well, that's something that you wouldn't hear very much of on the CNN, would you? No. Okay, no. so I think that, from my talk, Dean, it looks like